This lecture is on the inventory in a veterinary hospital. This is the, actually the last chapter uh, in your pharmacology book. I do put this um, a little bit earlier uh, because I kind of feel like it goes along with um, just some basic information. We need to understand why an inventory control system is important, uh, why and how it benefits a business, why turnover in inventory is important, uh, why or how you can become an efficient inventory control manager using some different uh, inventory record keeping systems. We're going to talk about different vendor types and how you communicate with sales representatives and then also um, how uh, veterinary management computer software can help with your pharmaceutical inventory. You probably didn't realize that as a veterinary technician, being an inventory control manager is actually one of the things that you will do. So these are some key terms that are in your book. Um, they are defined for you. I definitely recommend that you go through these um, and understand which, what each one of these means specifically. Why is it important? Um, so basically what we'll do in class is we're gonna come, we're gonna come together uh, or actually divide into three groups and, and discuss why infant control inventory control can affect your practice. I'm going to talk about financial, legal, and safety aspects of inventory control. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do so, but we will do that in class. So as an inventory control manager, typically we're going to choose an RVT um, uh, to do this. Um, a technician is going to know the medical side of the practice and also what the clients are buying. So they're a perfect person uh, to choose as somebody who buys um, the, the, the product for the hospital. You need to decide what to buy, what not to buy, when to buy it, and from whom. So how are we going to get this stuff in the hospital so that we can sell it? Keeping track of inventory is not the fun part of the job, um, but it is something that we have to do in order to understand what is selling and when it is selling. So we can do this monthly, we can do it yearly. There are a couple of different ways to do this. Um, we can track, we need to be able to track our assets in the hospital. We need to understand if things are disappearing off the shelves. And I hate to say this, but sometimes uh, we have employees that think that anything on the shelf is fair game. And so we have to be very careful um, with uh, tracking that to make sure that the business is not losing money. We also have to keep track of it for taxes. Um, if we are not paying taxes appropriately on items that we sell, uh, we can actually, that can shut down the business. You also need to decide what the cost is to the client. So that's a little bit more math um, and we'll talk about how we decide that. It is the second highest expense of running a practice behind paying your employees. So being really good at understanding how things are selling and when they're selling um, and how much to keep on the shelf uh, is really, really important. So inventory control, time is money. So the longer we have it on the shelf, the more it's actually costing us. We wanna do a first in, first out um, type of inventory, meaning that if we got something in last month, that was the first thing that we got in, we need to um, sell that before we get anything new in. So that's called FIFO, first in, first out. Um, when you see people stocking shelves in grocery stores, and this is what you need to do in the veterinary practice, they'll pull all the stuff that has not been sold, pull it to the front of the shelf and stack behind it. Um, so if you want something that's really fresh, you actually want to reach behind the first thing on the shelf. You want to buy only what you think you can sell in 30 days. Uh, that is really tricky to do. Um, but you can start to, uh, with experience and with your tracking data, you can start to um, anticipate what is going to sell um, during this time of the year. Any expired items are a loss to the practice. You have to have an understanding of what your turnover rate is and what your goal is. Um, and, the, and the goal is to have a turnover rate of 12 times per year, so every 30 days. Um, but if we can at least do it four times a year, depending on expiration dates, um, that's going to get us where we need to be. 
The objectives of an inventory control system are twofold. We want to make certain that items are on hand when they're needed. So if we don't have it, we can't use it for an animal that needs it, and we can't sell it to a person who needs it for their animal. We also need to be able to purchase needed items while staying within a budgeted amount. So you need to know what the budget is and you need to stay within that budget and make some good choices. Controlled substances are a little bit different. They are regulated by the Drug Enforcement Agency. Um, we need to realize that all controlled substances must be in a locked cabinet that is bolted uh, and, and the, um, there, there needs to be a safe that's bolted to the floor behind a locked cabinet, behind a second locked door. So it needs to be behind two locked doors, a, a door and a cabinet, and in a safe. The drug log for uh, schedules, uh, there are drug logs for t schedules two, three, and four. Schedule two drugs are separate from schedule three and four drug. We can keep a log for three and four drugs and a log for schedule two drugs. And if you'll remember, the, the lower the number, the more addictive and the more uh, dangerous and the more controlled those substances are. So the DEA forms, we also have special forms to purchase Schedule II drugs, and that needs to be done by a veterinary practitioner, so not a vet tech, because the veterinary practitioner holds that DEA license. And it's actually a very expensive license to hold. Um, it's renewed every five years, and it costs $700. Um, and it, you don't have to have any sp special certification to hold it, but you do need to be a practicing veterinarian who is following all the rules uh, for holding these controlled substances. When we are working with controlled substances, we have, to, we have to log everything that comes in, everything that's dispensed, and everything that is disposed of. So we need to check our invoices very cl closely, maybe uh, need to check the amounts that come in very specifically, and we need to check those expiration dates. If we have a controlled substance that expires, there is a special process to log that and to um, uh, remove it or dispose of it. How does your clinic keep track of what you have and what you need? Um, so this is different for every clinic, and what I'd like to do in class is to divide into three groups and, and discuss how each of the clinics that you worked in keeps track of um, what what is missing uh, off the shelf. You went to grab something and you can't find it. Um, how you um, anticipate that you're going to run out of something before you do. Um, share your best practices, what you think works best, <clears throat> give you a, a couple of minutes to go through that, and then we'll come back together and discuss that in class. So how do we figure out how much to charge the client? Um, now the cost of keeping items on the shelf um, in a pharmacy is more expensive than keeping items on a shelf in a, in a shopping mall or in a, um, in a grocery store. Um, in some cases, since in, when you're refrigerating items um, at a grocery store, that costs a little bit more. So we need to add that uh, to it. So we take the cost of the item, our cost, plus the tax, plus the shipping. That's our total cost. And then we're going to mark that up um, so that there is um, some uh, profit for the for the. Um, for the veterinary practice. This profit, if we're keeping these uh, these items on our shelf and we're not scripting them out, this profit goes to help cover costs of things like employees. Um, so, and, and lights in the, in the hospital and, you know, labels that we use and bottles that we get. So it does, it does go back into the hospital. Okay. So for instance, we have amoxicillin that's 100 milligrams, 100 in the 100 count bottle. So there's 100 tablets in this um, bottle. The cost to us is $26.75. We're going to add tax. We're going to just say it's 10% just because it's easier, although it's usually around 6 or 7%. Um, and so we add that. So it's 0.1 um, times um, 26 point. 0.1 of 26.7 um, is going to add 2.675. So that's going to be 29.425. Uh, so let's say we had no shipping. 
Okay, so no shipping involved with this. Um, so that was good. We're, but we have tax involved with this. So 29.425 is our cost with tax. In order to um, uh, mark that up, we do typically 100% markup on pills. So that means we're just going to double that amount. So our that bottle, that 100 tablets, are going to be 58.86. So that's just twice of 29.43. We're going to take that 58.86 and divide it by 100 tablets in the bottle, which gives us about 59 cents per tablet. So if we are um, we can round up to 60 cents if you want to, um, but we're going to sell each tablet for about 60 cents or 59 cents a tablet. So 10 tablets are going to cost $5.90 or $6. So that's enough for five days. So that's um, that's going to cover the cost of the bottle and the label and the time that it takes to fill that uh, medication. Special note on rabies vaccines, because we have to report rabies vaccinations um, with the serial numbers um, on the um, on the certificates, we do need to note those uh, on the on the vials that we are using. When the vial is changed, we need to change that serial number in the computer so that it matches on the certificate that's printed out. So we want to keep track of those serial numbers used through different time periods. Just uh, keep a log of those. We can do that in the computer. Um, but we do need to watch and uh, every time we change a, a rabies vaccine vial. Now, the serial numbers uh, will often get in a, a number of vials that are the same serial number, but we have to keep track of that. How do we organize the inventory? So in our central pharmacy, which is accessible to outpatients as well as inpatients, meaning that if you're working the front part of the hospital where you're seeing appointments, you're grabbing things off the shelf and it's very close to the treatment room. We can arrange in a couple of different ways. So we can arrange it completely alphabetically. We can arrange it by therapeutic use so that we're doing our ear meds over here, we're doing our eye meds over here, and we're doing our... Um, our antibiotics, uh, oral antibiotics over there, or we can do it by classification of the drug. Or we can print a master inventory list and organize by that list. So it really depends on what your clinic is, is used to doing and how quickly you can get to the medication. Some of this uh, uh, medication will need to be kept in cupboards, refrigerated or locked up in some way. So not everything, not everything on your master inventory list is going to be where you think it is. So you need to kind of understand the drugs and what they need. When we're doing a physical inventory, we're actually counting things. We can count all of the inventory items monthly, which if you have a pharmacy in your clinic, you know it's gonna it's gonna take a while to do that. Something that's a little bit more efficient is to rotate it. So we're going to divide our products into categories and we're going to number those categories or those groups of products one through four. We're going to count the first group or category in January, the second in February, the third in March, and the fourth in April. And then May, we're going to count the first one, sec and then the second one in uh, June. And then, So we're going to count each group uh, at least three times a year. Okay, so uh, that may be a little bit more efficient if you have a lot of drugs um, or uh, uh, items in your pharmacy. Vendors. We need to try to deal with as few vendors as possible because it can get really confusing. What's very helpful is we do have thing, uh, companies like MWI and Patterson, which um, is a kind of a middleman, um, but they deal with the vendors and then they are the company that we deal with and so they do all the communication with the vendors and try to get the lowest prices and then we get it shipped from those um, those companies. Delayed billing is something that some vendors will um, offer um, if we want to uh, do this in a way that we're making the money before we actually have to pay the bill, which is really helpful. Um, so there we order and then we don't have to pay for several weeks. We can already we can sell um, some of that um, some of those items or you know half of those items and actually pay that bill from sell from that those sales before we even get. Uh, the next have to to uh, order the next uh, amount. 
Um, bulk ordering is one way to do it. It actually saves on shipping. Um, if you have, um, if you're ordering, for instance, one uh, box of pills, uh, you're paying the same amount of shipping as you would if you order 12 box of pills. Now you have to watch ex expiration dates and make sure that you're going to be able to sell those pills or those the ear medication or whatever in those 30 days. But you want to you, you want to use that as much as possible because um, that will save you on um, the cost. You also want to watch when you when you do get. Um, uh, stuff in as the inventory control manager, you want to be the one that's unpacking it. It's just like when you go to the grocery store or somebody goes to the grocery store. Um, I always call my kids in to help um, put items away just so they can see what we have that's available um, and make and you know at this point this is when you're going to want to um, look for damaged goods or things that didn't get shipped that should have been shipped. You do want to pay attention to the freight on board rules and the shipment contracts. There are some contracts and freight on board rules um, that if they have unloaded the freight uh, and you have signed off on it, then you are responsible for any damage. So you want to look at those very closely and make sure that um, you don't become responsible for, the, for any damage, especially with high ticket items. Um, I'll give you an example of that. We, uh, my husband has a um, an aquarium business, a, a maintenance uh, aquarium maintenance business, and on occasion we order in uh, special tanks for people uh, to set up in their homes. And uh, these fish tanks are usually, you know, several thousand dollars. Well, if it gets off the truck and we don't notice a scratch on the tank, we're responsible for that, um, and that's really. A very expensive mistake to make. So you want to pay attention to those rules when you're working with your vendors to be sure that uh, you don't sign off on anything um, that you then become responsible for. So when you receive those orders, like I said, your ICM or inventory control manager should be unpacking the order or they, if the, the person has an assistant who knows what's going on, they, they need to unpack. New items need to be put behind the old items so that we can rotate the old stock out. Um, anytime it says refrigerate right away, you want to unpack those first. And you want to check that order before you pay the invoice. If you didn't get everything on the order, don't pay the invoice. Make sure you get that fixed first. Tracking, so if we're using a computer for inventory management or if you're using a, a, a paper um, model, you, you can only be as good as how accurate you are. So garbage in, garbage out, right? So if you put bad information into the computer or you don't put information into the computer, it's going to give you the wrong information out. Um, tracking is great because it can help us to be aware of trends and opportunities. So, you know, if it's um, getting warmer out and people are starting to take their dogs to the creeks and to the ponds and swimming, we're going to want to be sure that we know when to start ordering ear cleaning solution. So if we're aware of that, we can order it ahead of time, get a good deal on it and get those uh, sold, sold um, quickly. Now, if, you're, if your practice has been established for a period, a fairly long period of time, um, you're going to have really clear understanding of what, how many ear, um, ear cleaning solutions you need to buy. Uh, so that can really help you understand how to be very efficient with your ordering. That's it for this lecture. Um, if you have any questions, um, come prepared with those in class uh, and come prepared to discuss these items in class as well.